Our universities are justifiably a great source of pride, both here in the United States and around the world. Where else can you find such a concentration of scholarly expertise and excellence, such breadth and depth of knowledge? And coupled with that, maybe even more significantly, where else can you find such a concentration of um, energy and idealism and enthusiasm as that, as you guys can see from the talks that we've just heard, embodied among our students? Um, given this context, an interesting question becomes then, why is it that our universities um, are underperforming so clearly in, in the role of solving social problems, whether it be environmental degradation or the ever-widening gap between the rich and the poor in our own country and around the world. Universities often have little to say about solving these problems. They're rarely in a leadership role in solving these problems. And many times, they're not even at the table. What I'd like to do in my brief talk today is, prov is provide you guys with one of many examples that are here at Tulane University of art alternative ways to, um, to conceptualize the university and the university's role in civic engagement. And this case study comes from Ecuador, and specifically from the tropical Andes, which are a globally recognized conservation hotspot for the conservation of biodiversity. And my colleagues and I have been working for many years now in a, in a federal reserve in Ecuador called the Machi Chindul Reserve, which is a classic paper park in the sense that if you look at the description of this area on paper, it looks like a wonderful reserve similar maybe to our Yellowstone National Park or something like that. But in reality, there's very limited um, regulation and control of those, of those um, guidelines for management. So as a result, local residents are essentially doing what they want. Um, and the, the project that we're engaged in there is focused on the conservation of this bird right here, the long waddled umbrella bird. This species is in danger of extinction precisely because it depends upon pristine rainforests in this area. And as these rainforests disappear, so too does this species. <clears throat> now, I started working there about 10 years ago as a newly minted PhD. And, and I um, engaged in what I would call a traditional model of scholarship there, in the sense that I, what, I had US-based field assistance. I worked in a private reserve. Um, and my goal, what I was planning to do, was to gather information on the basic biology of this endangered species, publish these findings in peer-reviewed journals and in uh, scholarly uh, conferences. And I thought that by doing that, I would be able to achieve the conservation of this species. Um, I paid very little attention to the cultural and community context in which this work happened, but there certainly was a context in the sense that this area where I was working um, it was surrounded by communities and local residents whose actions and attitudes, de facto because of the lack of control, were really going to determine the way that things played out conservation-wise for this species. It took, a, it took a random act of cruelty to a defenseless animal, this, um, this anteater right here, to make me realize how futile those efforts were. This, this anteater was uh, mauled by, a, by somebody wielding machete and left for dead for no real apparent reason, not to eat it, not because it was causing trouble, just out of cruelty. And as I saw this poor animal, I saw a young boy walking towards me, and I said to him, isn't this terrible, what's happened to this poor animal? And he looked at me as if I had come from outer space. There was no conception that there was something wrong here, and I realized at that moment, very powerfully, that without changing local attitudes and local actions, I could do the best conservation-related research in the world and publish in the best journals, but it was never going to have any sort of impact. Attitudes of people like this are what really matter. For that reason, um, we started a multifaceted conservation and outreach program in Ecuador, which combines training of local residents, environmental education, the search for sustainable alternatives, and top-quality qu top environmental research. And I want to show just a brief story about Jorge Olivo, someone who's worked on this project for many years. Jorge, like many local residents, eked out a living by subsistence level agriculture, hunting and slash and burn agriculture, uh, prior to joining our project. Since working on our project, he's gained technical expertise um, as, a, as a scientific researcher, not just in the collection of data, but also in contributing in a very fundamental way to the formulation of the ideas and the hypotheses that you would test research-wise. 
He takes what he learns out in the field by doing this biology research, and he's an advocate in which he presents his ideas to his own and other communities, promoting an uh, environmental ethic. And this has been a transformative effect for Jorge. It's led to him uh, being co-author on many peer-reviewed uh, journals. It's led to him giving presentations of his own research in international and national scientific meetings. And it's really um, given him a sense of identity in his own and other communities. And he's one of many people who've worked through the, what we call this environmental ambassador program. Um, so I want to I want to leave you by revisiting the fundamental question here. What is the role of the university in today's world? And I would like to point out, and I hope that this case study exemplifies the fact that, first of all, the dichotomy that, some t that sometimes people pose between universities being places of knowledge generation versus places where civic engagement takes place is a false one. There's no reason why universities can't be both. And in fact, I would argue, that civic, civic engagement can enhance the quality and the quantity of scholarship while also helping to make the world a better place. Um, so I'll leave you with this quote by the Irish poet W.B. Yeats, which says, the human soul is always moving outward into the external world and inward into itself. And this movement is double because the human soul would not be conscious were it not suspended between contraries. The greater the contrast, the more intense the consciousness. And I believe that this concept is what really defines the relationship between scholarship in the academy and civic engagement through universities. Thank you very much.